Are you a media user, an avid media consumer, whether it's TV, movies, music? Are you a long-time Plex user? Maybe you use Jellyfin, or maybe perhaps you use MB, or one of the other various different media servers that you are currently using to get your media to your friends and family, or for yourself, and getting out to the world. We've covered Plex a few times here on the channel, and we still use Plex personally, and it's an amazing product. But there's always room for improvement, and there's also space on the horizon to look for new and different options. Hola Ibra Army, and welcome to another IbraCorp video. Thank you for joining us today, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And today we're going to be looking at DIM. DIM is a media server, or as it claims here, it's a self-hosted media manager. With minimal setup, DIM will organize and beautify your media collections, letting you access and play them anytime from anywhere. Now luckily for us, DIM is available as a Docker container, which is fantastic. It always makes it easy for us to deploy, especially if you're using something like Compose, or if you're using Unraid and want to use the App Store to get the app. Today, we're going to give you an introduction of DIM. It's going to be an introduction for ourselves as well. So we're going to go through it together and just see how it looks, how it feels, give you a pretty bare idea on where it's at at this current point in time. If you enjoy what we're doing, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. We really appreciate it. And it really helps YouTube get us out there to a bigger audience so that we can keep bringing you better content. So if you're interested in checking out a new media server, maybe you just want to know a little bit more about this particular one, maybe you have some ideas for your own media server at home and you want to see how this is implemented, then this is going to be the video for you. We hope you enjoy and without further ado, let's get stuck into it. A good, beautiful morning on a Sunday here in Melbourne, Australia. I hope you are having the same wherever you are when you're watching this video. And I've been looking forward to this video, to be honest, guys. This has been an interesting one. It's sort of popped up on the horizon recently. We've had a few of our members in Discord mention it to us, and uh, we really appreciate them bringing it up. If you haven't joined our Discord, be sure to join. It's really, really fun to have everyone in there and have an active community where we support each other and help each other learn some valuable information. Now, I'm here on the project page for DIM, and if we just scroll up, it's Dusk Labs forward slash DIM, and DIM is the media manager, as they claim, fueled by dark forces. Now, here at Ibracorp, we like dark forces. If you've seen our logo, you've seen our uh, trailers, and you've seen our you know teasers, we like the whole mysterious dark forces thing, so that kind of works for us here. Um, I've actually had a comment on Reddit before calling us out as... Uh, hypocritical because we're called Ibracorp and yet we cover open source stuff. Now, I know sarcasm doesn't really get picked up very often, it's kind of subjective, but for those who don't realize, the name is a play on words, it's actually for fun, it's not actually serious, we don't treat it as a corporation. We love open source and that's all we've been covering. So it's kind of meant to be an ironic name for anyone that doesn't know. So make sure you go back and let that Reddit user know. We're just here for fun, guys. So here's DIM anyway. Let's go through it real quick on the project page. Now it's got the install steps if you're running Docker. So if you want a Docker run command, you've got that here. Uh, you've got the hardware acceleration as well, which we'll go through ourselves. Uh, most importantly is this part here. And if you're already using Plex and you've been using it with your uh, driver, you probably know how to apply this already. We covered it in one of our Plex videos. Now, it looks pretty clean to me. I think that looks, you know, fairly straightforward, very similar in terms of the initial impression that I get with something like Plex, Mix, mixed with a probably a little bit of MB as well, uh, with its flatness, but that's kind of nice, so I like that. Um, so here on the page, obviously, it's going to give us very minimal information for what we want to see. We actually want to get in there and give it a go. So we're going to get it started for you and have a quick look. And we're going to have a look together, guys. This is a fresh one for me personally. Um, so hopefully we can sort of experience it together. So jump into your Unraid server, go to the App Store and search for DIM. Now, if you don't have Unraid, you're using Docker. Obviously, I've just shown you the project page where you can get the Docker run command or if you want to build a Docker Compose file out of it. Um, we won't be providing one on this occasion, but if you guys are interested in DIM, we can definitely do that and do a more in-depth guide at a later stage. Today's video is just video based because it's an introduction. We're going to have a look at it together. So let's click on DIM and click on install. Now keep in mind, if you're not using Unraid and you're watching this video, just hang in there because once we get this initial install done, which is going to be in about two seconds, 
uh, then we can carry on with the actual looking of the application, which you can join us for. It's not OS specific at that point. So here we are on the template and uh, by default, it's got a couple of options. We're gonna change them, okay? Network type, we're gonna set that to our custom Docker network. We always love to do that, you guys know this. Uh, and watch our video on that if you haven't. We'll click on show Docker allocations because port 8000, that seems like familiar to me. I may have already mapped that to something. Okay, only one of one, that means I don't have it mapped, that's fine. So we'll leave it at 8000. Now it's gonna ask for our media path. Where's our media stored? If you guys have watched our hard link video, this is not where our media is stored, so we're gonna change that. Obviously apply it to whatever you've called yours. And I highly recommend you guys really check out that hard links video. It is phenomenal the difference it will make to your experience. And a big, big thanks to Trash and his guides, Trash Guides. We have him in our Discord and we have links to all of his stuff, including his own Discord as well. Be sure to join and give him some props, support him for his work, it's a fantastic guide. So in the media path, let's click edit. And we're just gonna go back here and our media is actually saved in user forward slash data and then media. So as you can see, we've got our media in here. So we wanna map the root folder, click save. So now that we've mapped our media location, then the graphics card path. Now this is set in for us already, and that's gonna use our Intel integrated GPU for us with this default setting. If you're using anything else like a dedicated graphics card, if you need to pick it specifically, you may do that. But as you can see in our case, this will work fine, okay? Again, if you're using Intel GPU, you can just leave that as is. The config path, we have our MNT user app data and then DIM, that's perfect. Not many settings for us to configure, which is nice. So once we're ready, go ahead and click apply. And while that's loading, and already a selling point for them there, they did say that it was lightweight, ready to go, easy to set up. So that's a good start. So there you go, our Docker container started. We'll go back to the Docker tab, and you can see DIM is running. Now, at this point, if you have installed it or started it on a different OS, you can now join in with us. We're gonna be on the same page. So it doesn't matter what OS you're running, open it up and let's get started. So first things first, authenticate and continue to your media. Well, we don't have an account yet, so we're gonna click create a new account. And you are making an admin account, okay? It's telling us straight up, so let's start creating that. So I've created a username called admin and the password, and I'll go ahead and click register. Okay, so here we are. It's brought us straight in basically, and uh, we're thrown right into the deep end. The first thing it's gonna want us to do is add our library. So naturally, why don't we do that so that we can get an idea on how everything is laid out. So click on add library. And uh, I'm gonna call this TV. It's gonna be a type of shows. And we obviously mapped our media location. So that's there, media, and then TV. Okay, so what it actually wants us to do is just check this box and that matches up with what we've got TV. Now, if you've got TV 4K, obviously you would pick your 4K folder. Go ahead and click add library. And straight away, it's done a spin up and scan our library, which is great. Picking up stuff fairly quickly, to be honest. Look at it go. That's really cool. We're on the dashboard here. What I'm gonna do is then go to libraries, click the plus, and we're gonna add movies as well. So let's add movies. And again, we'll go down to our media folder, which we mapped, check movies and click add libraries. So now we've got both locations there and it's starting to do its thing. Now the layout is really nice. I will say that it's very snappy, which, which is great to see. It's still scanning all the content, which we have quite a bit. So hopefully that will start loading up a bit quicker. Now, while that's scanning our content and filling up all the metadata, what I might do is just go through the preferences and we'll see what options we have in there. So we click on preferences and we'll start going through. We've got our password for our account and we can also delete the account if we so choose. Click on profile. We can upload a picture. So there we go, I've uploaded the picture. You can see that now and our username as well. So we can change the username if we wanted to as well. Go down to playback, and what do we got in playback? So, first of all, just looking at this, if you're an avid user of Plex, you've, you've known how many settings are in there. Um, this looks a lot smaller, so I'm interested to see how this is gonna work. So the player settings, select default video quality. 
We've got direct play, and then you've got the option to choose uh, different quality settings. Not as detailed as Plex's from what I can see. It's just either 1080, 720, or 480, and at these bit rates. Uh, but we're gonna leave it as direct play and see how that goes. Enable hardware acceleration is checked by default. Now that's different to Plex, where you have to have Plex Pass to enable it. Um, that's already enabled for us straight off the bat. So big plus there to the developers. Thank you for doing that. Next, you have the autoplay. If enabled, the next video will be played once the current media finishes. So that's good. And subtitle, enable experimental support for SSA and, well, do we have to really say that one out loud? Uh, ASS subtitles. Now, we have invites. We want to invite someone. So why don't we create a new token, for example? And we have this token. What do we do with it at this point? Now, I'm not too sure, to be honest. I've tried looking into the wiki. I can't see anything about this. So what I might do, what if we just log out? It doesn't seem to be any option there. I'll go to preferences. Doesn't seem to be an option there either. So I'm not really sure how to accept an invite. If anybody knows, be sure to drop it in the comments below because that would be really useful to know. But I like the idea. So basically we're giving them a secure token and it will be assigned to that person. Uh, perhaps we need to create a user account and then give them the token. I'm not really sure on that one. We'll go down to appearance. Now this is nice. We have some different uh, theme options that we can choose from. I love that they've called this blind and uh, forgive me for a second. We're gonna try it. So you will actually be blinded for a moment. Pretty bright. And then you've got absolute dark, which is lights off. I like that. Um, I think I prefer just normal dark, but it's nice to give you the option there because everybody's different. With the cards, so show media name under cards across the dashboard and libraries and show media information when hovering over a card. I love that it's toggled, that's a good option. Then we go into advanced and we have a couple of different things here. Now general, we don't have to touch the port, that's being controlled by Docker, so we've set that on the Docker container. The cache looks interesting to me. Uh, TMP streaming underscore cache. And you also have a path for where the metadata is gonna be saved. Now this is interesting because in the Docker container template that we've used, if we go back to it, we don't actually have a location mapped here to tell us where the metadata is gonna be saved. Now if we just have a look at this, this cache area here for example, TMP slash streaming cache, we go back to the Docker template that we've got in Unraid, we don't actually have that mapped. So that kind of gives me the impression that it's going to start filling up the container image itself unless we map that. So I feel like it might be in our best interest to map that. And what we'll do is pretty much use the same thing that Plex used, but we'll change it up a little bit. So go to add another port path of variable. And with the path, we're going to just call that cache. In the container path, we want this path here. So copy that. So we've got TMP streaming underscore cache. And then for the host path, we can pick a spot that we want it to live in. So preferably it's going to be somewhere that's going to be on your cache, obviously for obvious reasons. So I actually have a share called cache FS. You can have one if you like. You can put it in the app data folder uh, for DIM if you prefer. Just somewhere where you have a permanent spot where it lives on the cache drive. So what I'm going to do is put it here and call it cache FS slash DIM and we can leave the rest and click add. Reapply that. And so now we've mapped a location for our cache. So let's go back to preferences, continue where we were. So now we have this spot actually mapped to our host. Do the same on any other platform. If you're using it on Ubuntu, for example, whatever the case might be, just make sure you're mapping that. Um, I'm sure it's probably in the Docker run command anyway, but just worth making sure you've got that mapped. Now authentication require a valid auth token for each request to the server. Now that's likely the token that we've seen just up here. Create a token to invite someone and allow them to access your media. So at any point, I can revoke that access if we want. So we've got that token here. We can just click trash and see you later, it's gone. And that's pretty much all we've got in our settings thus far. Let's go back to the dashboard. We'll see if any of this content started to load up now. And it looks a lot better. We've, we're starting to see a lot more metadata now, which is good. So let's click on a item of content and see how this plays. So we've clicked on the content. Now the way this seems to work is you select the season here. So as you can see, we're on season one and it's showing me season one episodes. You've then got season two and that will then change the episodes down here. I don't know whether these just haven't loaded yet, so we'll click on that. And uh, that played almost instantly. 
And what I'll show you off screen is in our cache location that we've mapped, you can now see the folder being created after we've just clicked play on the content. So it is actually storing it on our cache. So yeah, like I said, I really highly recommend that you guys add that parameter. I'll see if we can get in touch with the current maintainer, see if they can add it to their template. And it just it benefits the community, obviously. But that's streaming perfectly fine. Now, obviously I'm working locally, so I haven't tested this remote just yet, but that seems pretty good. So let's stop that there. I'll stop the content playing and now that folder is empty. So it is clearing itself out, which is good as well. And um, now I've started to load up all the other metadata, which is great. And what can I say? That is probably the easiest setup I've ever seen in terms of a media server. It's pretty straightforward. We didn't really have to do much there. We get some nice details on stuff as we hover over them, for example. See how it just cuts in there. Now, the other thing we'll test is our CPU once it's going. Now, don't see any sort of dashboard to monitor the content as it's playing inside of DIM, but we can monitor the server itself. So why don't we play something? And why don't we play this, for example? And I'll go to the server itself, and we're just having a look here on our CPU, how that's handling things at the moment. Now do bear in mind, I have all these other containers and VMs running as well, so you're gonna see activity, but I'm not seeing any CPU threads being uh, absolutely smashed, I'm not seeing them get hung up on. So I would assume that the transcoding is working pretty well, and the content is playing perfectly fine as well. Now, oddly enough, there isn't a back button there in, in the media player itself, I had to actually use back on my mouse. Seems a bit odd, but other than that, seems okay. So I don't know if you guys have heard of DIM or if you've uh, given it a try already, but I reckon give it a go. I mean, why not? It's free and open source and uh, the developers seem to have done a pretty good job. It's nice and clean and functional. You may find that some of the features you're used to in Plex aren't in here, or maybe they're not here just yet. In which case, I recommend you go to the GitHub page for the project, uh, leave your feedback or leave any issues, You know, log it with the developers so they're aware. But definitely give them some attention because I think they've done pretty well here. That seems very, very smooth. I'm sure, guys, we could spend a whole day doing all sorts of thorough testing and I would love to do it. But I just thought I'd do this first introduction with you guys. And if you're interested and you like what you saw, we can do more on this for sure. So leave a comment down below on what you thought about DIM. If you enjoyed it, be sure to join our Discord and uh, be part of the discussion on the latest video. I'm going to leave it there for today, but I hope you enjoyed it. This is Psychotics from Ibracorp. We'll see you in the next Ibracorp video.